Hi, my name is Jeff Rich, Executive Director of Gunderson Lutheran Envision, and we're here today to do a virtual tour of our landfill gas to energy project. Uh, this project uh, was started with, uh, as a combined effort with La Crosse County Solid Waste Department. Uh, it's a project where we uh, capture and, uh, and utilize landfill gas that was previously being flared. How the process works is it is pumped from the La Crosse County Solid Waste Department, the landfill, through a low pressure gas line, comes into a engine or a generator set located on the Unalaska Gunderson Lutheran campus. That generator set produces electricity with that fuel and also waste heat uh, that we can use to heat the buildings on this campus. So the Unalaska campus has about 350,000 square feet of space, so a very large campus and we completely offset the heat with this project and we produce more electricity than we consume on this campus. So that makes it the first energy independent healthcare campus in the country that we know of. So that's the beginning of the project uh, and, and how it does what it does. Um, La Crosse County gets uh, paid for the gas that we use here. We get paid for the electricity we produce and save money for the heat savings that we have on our buildings. Uh, the equivalent power uh, from this engine generator set is about 1,100 kilowatts uh, or about enough to power 800 homes a year. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take you on a virtual walkthrough tour, uh, explain a few of the, the bigger features of the project and hopefully give you a sense for how it works. I'm here with Nick Nichols, the Sustainability Coordinator for the La Crosse County Solid Waste Department. He's going to explain more about how this process begins, how do you get landfill gas, what it does normally, and how we captured it in this effort. Thanks, Jeff. Well, for the most part, all of the waste that comes through our system gets put into the landfill. Uh, when it ends up in the landfill, we cover it up with daily cover. Eventually, it's compacted, crushed up, and enclosed, basically in a tomb. That material breaks down, and as it breaks down, it creates methane gas. Now, we're required by the DNR to take that gas and do something with it. You can see by the flare behind me, what we used to do is gather that gas and just burn it off. We collect somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 standard cubic feet per minute. And we have a series of pumps on the landfill and wells and a piping. And we put a vacuum on all, all those systems and we pull that gas to a central place. It used to come here, we used to burn it off. Luckily, we found a partner in Gunderson Lutheran and we took that gas. Now we uh, run it through our compressor. We clean it, we cool it, we pull out the moisture, then we reheat it and we send it through a pipeline that's 1.6 miles long to Gunderson's Onalaska campus, where they run it through their Yenbacher engine, create electricity and heat for their system. Okay, we're standing on top of the landfill where all of our landfill gas is made. If you look off to the side here, you can actually see the compressor building down below. And then in the distance behind me, you can see Gunderson Lutheran's Onalaska campus. That gas travels from that compressor building 1.6 miles to Gunderson Lutheran's on Alaska campus. So here we are. This is where the landfill gas comes into the generator set. And you can see it's a rather large diameter pipe and it's pressurized at about 6 psi and we meter it here. We measure how much volume we're getting in cubic feet per minute. And we also measure the uh, methane content or heat value and we pay the county based on the BTUs that we consume in this engine. So you can see as the uh, train comes forward here, you have the pipes and then it goes in, the fuel goes right into the engine uh, right here on the outside of the compartment. So now we're going to enter into the generator control room. Uh, you'll see we have electronic equipment and monitoring uh, systems in place here to make sure the engine's running properly. This is where we control it. So we have a control module here, a power panel, and we can monitor how many kilowatts we're producing at any moment and uh, resolve problems from this area right here. This is just a control panel, one of the screens that we have, and at this particular moment we're making 843-44 kilowatts. Uh, you can see the methane content, CH4, is 51.9%. Uh, we typically see about 51% methane out of the landfill gas, and the gas flow here is in meters cubed per hour but it's right around 300 cubic feet per minute. That's the current conditions at this moment. Uh, these systems are also tied in and we can monitor them remotely on our computers. And so we have a diagnostic system to monitor this 24 hours a day. All right, in a few moments, we're gonna step inside the engine compartment. We're gonna see the engine and generator, or the gen set. 
and it's very loud, uh, but essentially what we have here is a 16-cylinder big car engine, if you want to think of it that way, a fancy car engine. It's a uh, V-block with reciprocating pistons, uh, four-liter uh, cylinders, and uh, it produces an awful lot of horsepower. The engine drives a shaft, which then goes through a motor winding and creates electricity. And that electricity will come outside of the building. Another thing that happens uh, in this compartment is we capture heat. We're going to recover heat to heat our facilities on the Alaska campus. And so there's a glycol solution that captures heat from the oil in the block as well as the exhaust. So once the power is created by the generator set, uh, it's wired underneath here to this transformer. And then it gets stepped up to 13.8 uh, kilovolts, which is the grid uh, voltage level that Excel Energy maintains in this location. And we sell the power to Excel Energy. We have some other um, interconnection equipment behind us in these cabinets, uh, but we uh, essentially have the interconnection with Excel Energy and, and sell the power to them on a purchase agreement. So we recover the heat from the uh, block on the engine uh, through a, a mixture of glycol and water, okay, so that it doesn't freeze in the cold temperatures in the wintertime. But we use that, we have a loop running through the block to recover heat. We also have a loop running to the exhaust from the engine, the exhaust system, and uh, that also recovers heat. We capture those and run them through these pipes that you see overhead down into our pump building, which houses the pumps that will then pump the heat to our buildings on the campus. Okay, so now we're in our, our pump room, what we call the pump house, and uh, basically the glycol solution we mentioned that's coming uh, back and forth through the engine and recovering heat, it's piped in here, and you can see that there's two supply lines, two large supply pipes that are coming in. Uh, they end up hitting these pumps right here that we see in red, and then those pumps pump that solution out to our buildings. And you can see also on the wall we have a return line so we basically pump this through this loop to each building, our support services building and our Unalaska clinic, um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And in those buildings, that heat uh, is exchanged with their air systems and the domestic hot water systems that serve those buildings, uh, the mechanical systems that we already have in place. So rather than heating that with natural gas that we fire in boilers, we're now able to recover this heat and heat all the hot water needs and all of the building heating needs with this system. All right, so once the glycol solution that captures the heat uh, leaves the pump house, it gets pumped underground in some large pipes and comes to each of our two buildings, the support services building on this campus and the Unalaska clinic. Uh, here we are at the support services building and you can see the pipes behind me are basically the supply and return lines for that glycol solution. So. In this particular facility, we go up to the uh, roof or our penthouse on the top of the roof and uh, the solution is exchanging heat with our air handling systems and our domestic hot water systems uh, that provide all the hot water and all the building air heating needs here. Uh, and then it cools down from that process and returns back to the pump house where it picks up more heat and repeats the cycle again. So in wrapping up, this particular project was able to use a previously wasted resource, landfill gas. Uh, we use that now to produce clean electricity as well as heat uh, that recovers on the Gunnarsson Lutheran on Alaska campus, making it the first known energy independent healthcare campus in the country. If you'd like to learn more, or if you'd like to learn how Gunnarsson Lutheran Envision can help you and your organization get started, please contact us at the information listed on your screen.